is all of us we have a human inclination or part of our system we often wish we could escape troubles that's the nature we're used to to desire that you know that's our inclination to the physical senses we wish we can get away from troubles or problems or pain or grief or loss or sorrow even the small frustrations daily that easily wear us out now God promised to be near to those who are broken hearted he's close to them because Jesus Christ died with a broken heart now don't lose hope if you are in a problem or in situation in any in, in any circumstances maybe family or or health now uh, to be sick is not a blessing we know but in that journey don't lose hope or relationship continue to endure and all you have to do is Lord give me the grace I am shattered since that there I am hanging on the roof I tell you what God will never lose his grip to you the one who began the good work shall sustain you until the day of his appearing so continue to endure and follow the Lord as a great example of endurance patience suffering and then finishing the work assigned to him even before he gave up his cause and his blood breath and he said into the hand I commend my spirit not my will but your will be done God did it and he did it well he finished it well before God the Father now entering God's kingdom you'll start in a narrow way so I want you to arm and I want you to refashion reprogram your mind that to be a Christian yes it's happy life a peaceful life a joyful life but it is not and it is not a narrow is you know, a wide road it is very narrow I should say the road to heaven is narrow and the Bible says very few find it pastor what does it mean that's why broken hearted in this context I'll tell you to be broken hearted means uh, two things if you are experiencing some problems in serving God broken hearted broken hearted in uh, contrite spirit in a few moments means a real repentant to your failures and your comings, you have to get rid of that. That is broken in the spirit. You have to really make business with God. Now, the way to heaven is narrow, and very few find it. And on the other hand, some trouble in the right road, in the narrow road, in the going to heaven for years later, sad, and we love them. They change their affection and change their commitment and go back to the world of sin, pleasures, money, and fame. Now, these are believers that are still attending church, but something took over in the reign of Christ. Christ was this, the throne. Something else is now reigning in the heart of that believer. So, attending church, affection and allegiance is switched to the world of sin, Sex and self. Three S. Sin, sex, and self. Many at present time are in this road, the perdition. So it's not a good news. But we have to feel the the passion and burden. And they're going to destruction. And I'll give you some examples that are so real. I met so many of that, even in America, even here. God is love. And God will forgive absolutely. He will never be exhausted. God, I'm sorry, He will forgive. But God, the Bible is very clear, is not mocking. He is not playing around. What you sow, what I sow, you will reap. And by their fruits, you shall know them. So, we can see the other side of the broken heart. The contrary spirit means fruit of true repentance when you become a believer i want you to follow me we have so many flaws and shortcomings that is our nature no question 
But as you and I grow in the Lord, and once you hear the word of God, and sing into your ear, into our God, when you go home, you may meditate, Lord, can you begin the work inside of my heart? Change me. That word is for me. God, change me and make me your person. In other words, the things, your flows, and your comings, and little failures, once you come to the knowledge of Christ, you say, God, help me. You hate it that flows in shortcomings and failures in uh, all character traits. You hate it like you're a Yankee. You are, you are I, I cannot live with you anymore. I will divorce you. That old character, I stump you. I will kick you out. You have no place in my heart. And when you say, God, I'm sorry for what I have done. This is displeasing to you. It is stinky to your nostril. You cannot accept this. Yes, I'm serving you. Yes, I'm forgiven. But I still living over and over to the same kind of condition in life. I cannot get through about this problem. Lord, I relinquish, I surrender to you. Once you say those things over and over again, you hate it. There is an action in your heart and in your life facing the front and say, I hate you and I rebuke you. I have no place. It come back to you. I hate you. I rebuke you. I divorce. You have to make 180 degrees and saying, God, hold my hand. No longer walking in the road, road to destruction where majority are going to that place. I'm walking in a unknown place in an area that is not familiar, that is not very uh, special to people in a narrow path of life toward eternity. So, broken heart means there is the fruit of true repentance that the psalm is talking about. This is a very significant gem and a gold nugget for a believer to possess, for me to have. So the work of God in your life, in my life, in our lives, in our hearts, flourishes and produces fruits of godly character. Why there are so many quarrels and fightings and separations and divorce? and factions and many relationships. Now James said, is it is not coming from your heart, your dirty heart. The, the fighting is inside of the human heart. It has to be conquered there. If it is, con if it is not conquered there, you are defeated wherever your relationship will be a problem. You cannot have a good relationship with any kind of people. It has to be conquered right then and there by saying, I hate you, you kind of problem, faction, jealousy, and pride, and all these kind of things, and uh, uh, all those things that you can mention, or, or gossip, or slander, and idolatry, I love other things than God. Once you conquer that in your heart, once you are beginning to, what they call like a water, once you put in the clean water of the Word of God, the felt and the dirt, and some of the foreign bodies from the dust, when you pour out the clean water, it continues to overflow. Eventually, clean water will reside in that container. So, why? There are so many believers, they see and they find their problems instead of talking to people who know the Word of God and people who are close to God, they go to the court of the land. Why? They can do it by themselves. They can talk. They have uh, somebody with, with middle mean, uh, in that conversation or maybe a pastor or a man of God or a godly counselor. They go to the court of the land right away. That is a sign that you are already defeated and the face of Jesus Christ is slapped before the Gentile courts. So to be a believer, you have to wait on God, Lord, I believe that you are able, you can change the course of my destiny, and I believe as I yield to you in my true repentance in my life. Why the church today, this our question will go to the past a few moments, so I want you to see beyond the four corners of our church and other church, don't just look around, generally speaking, Christendom. Why the church today is approached as a place for those who have no hope? Sad. A place for the poor and the trouble. Have you heard comments from the unbelievers? Why should I go to church when they fight each other inside the church? 
They keep fighting there and bickering, is slamming each other by character assassination. They're fighting each other, but fighting each other, and there is no unity and peace. Why should I go there? It's better outside. We have peace. Now, of course, some will just destroy the church, but some of these reports are true. I mentioned to you a long time ago, there was a church. It's a growing church in our country. Big, big church right now. They have colleagues right now. In the early days, pastors and superintendents, no, they are not, I'm not cutting their, their throat, but you can see carnality or immaturity in the church. Pastors and superintendents and national superintendents, they're fighting each other inside the church in front of the believers and new converts in a big city in Manila. And it was in the publication in one newspaper in the Philippines that name, instead of praising God, it become a battleground. The church is a battleground. Instead, battle temple, it become a battle temple with all the factions of pastors and ministers in district and national superintendent. A big church now, it will continue. You know, church, thank God there's a healing. I thank God for it. So that's not only the other side, there's a healing. So very, very important for us to understand that our life inside the church If a man's way please the Lord, if our fellowship were so close, loving, exhorting one another to repentance, if somebody fail you or whatever, say sorry and apologize and reconciliation is right then and there. If a man's way please the Lord, even the unbelievers and enemies outside, they'll make peace with you because they can see Jesus Christ in our lives. They cannot say evil against you. Because the very life we are portraying is what we are inside, is what we are to the outside world. The transformation is taking place here, and then the visibility of our expression is out there. So we have education here, we have expression outside. So it's not that we are enjoying here and then do what the world is doing, no. We have to be the people of God and word and then in action. We have to be people of changed heart, changed character. When we experience the true repentance, contrite heart, like David, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Don't take away the Holy Spirit from me. Restore the joy of my salvation. Repentant, broken, shattered, in splinters, into pieces. He was so humble. Great man of God, like Lord, like Samson. He squandered. He, he, he did a big time sin before God because of Delilah. And his prayer was, that is to repentance, give me Lord one more chance. Allow your servant, Lord, to die with the Philistine. So your name will not become a laughing stock or to become ridiculed. Allow me to die. Restore to me the strength that I used to have then. And he hold the topos. The strength is restored. And he killed more than when he was alive. We need to die to ourselves. And we can see the lives that will be emerging through our example. Because of God the character. It is not how good is the preaching. It is not how good is... The problem that we have, the most important thing is your heart and my heart that is blended in the heart of Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing in the church. Now, <clears throat> listen to this. If a person don't have peace in his heart, if there is no peace at home, it will eventually affect the people who hung around him. That's a fact. What you are in your heart, what you are in your home, will bring the message of who you are inside the church. The church is not a place for a good time. It's a place where you can not only reflect 
but you come to the church revive and bless and become a blessing to your brothers and sisters in the Lord. That is what we're here for. That is kononeia. That is fellowship. I'll be a blessing to you. I'll be a blessing to me. Within the group of people that become blessed one to another, it will become like a big blast of energy. The contaminated community will be affected with that got the character of the people inside the church of that Quaker's Hill. There's a church in Dunsai. And I, I, I say, hey, I'm very, very sad to see churches uh, uh, that are closing and then people are leaving. And the church in Dunsai used to be about 60 people. And uh, according to the report of the pastor reporting to me, and I know the men, I know both of them, uh, for confidentiality, I love them so I cover their name. Now, the church become the people attending from 60 to one family. Assistant pastor is still there because he was imported from overseas. One family plus the husband and wife. So I don't know if there are seven plus two, they're not. The shall. From 60, one family, and the pastor and the assistant pastor. And uh, 